Hello everyone, Mystic Intuition here. We are getting ready to do a pick a card reading. This is going to be a, um, a special, what do they feel about you reading? So we're going to look at this person's true feelings for you. We're going to look at what they think about you, what do they like about you, what they may dislike about you, um, and what do they really want with you, okay? So what I've done here is I've, I've um, laid out three different decks. We have deck number one, which is the Steampunk Tarot with a Rose Quartz Tower. Uh, we have deck number two here, which is the Mermaid Tarot with a Tourmaline and Quartz Tower. And deck number three here, which is the Mystic Dreamer with a Tiger's Eye Tower. And we are going to give just a couple moments here. Timestamps will be in the description box. Go ahead and pick your deck and we'll get started. All right, welcome pile number one. If you chose the rose quartz, then this is your reading. Let's go ahead and get started here. All right, for the collective, what needs to be known, seen and understood for pile number one. What does this person really think about you? Okay, so let's just start with what do they think about you? How do they see the situation with you? Um, what are, what's on their mind? What do they think about when they think about you and the connection? What do they think about when they think about you and this connection? Oh, so you broke their heart or they feel there's, for whatever reason, the situation, it's somehow in the past. Um, now you could definitely could be thinking about an Aries. Okay, we also have air energy here, but five of swords, the three of swords and the emperor. Well, this, this leads me to believe that they've walked away or they may have chose something else in place of this connection, they, that they have prioritized something else. Now, when we talk about third parties, third party is not always a physical person. A third party is an energy that someone allows to come between the two of you. For instance, we have you, we have them, we have the other thing. Maybe they're a workaholic, maybe they struggle with addictions, maybe there's toxic family or friends involved. They could be exes, you know, baby mama, that kind of thing. Five of Swords. It's like they look at this situation in the past. They think that you're not together. They think that, you know, potentially their pride could have been an issue here or a masculine figure. So for some of you, it could have been that maybe you were married um, or there was a man somehow um, blocking the connection. If not that, then they see maybe themselves as the emperor or you as the emperor. Again, gender is irrelevant here, but the emperor is someone who can be like a boss, an authoritative figure, someone powerful and protective. But to me, when I see this, my initial feeling and thoughts is that there's something here to do with a man. A man somehow coming between your connection. A man who has been part of the issue. So, what do they think about you? What do they think about you? What are their thoughts about you? Well, it's been a while, it seems. They feel like there's been distance for a while, emotionally or physically, um, that, you know, they've been kind of waiting. They think about it all the time. They actually think that you're the one that got away. Um, they think of you as somebody who's was always very patient and a planner, someone very organized, but also very passionate and fun and creative, somebody very loyal and family-oriented, someone that they actually could see themselves you know, building a life with, okay? Seven of Pentacles is a card of waiting, calculating, planning. Ace of Wands is passion, new beginnings, attraction. So, I mean, yes, they definitely find you very attractive. Um, Ten of Pentacles, they, they actually think of you as someone that they could build a long-term committed partnership with. They can see themselves having a family with you, marriage. Um, they think that you're the one that got away. And they've been kind of waiting to kind of rekindle things with you. Okay, so let us, let's go ahead and dip into um, what do they like about you? We see what they think about you, but what do they like about you? What are their likes about you? Nine of Wands, the Queen of Swords, and the Empress. Okay, so this is, again, very positive. Um, Nine of Wands, it's like no matter what you have been through, they like that you don't give up. You're not somebody who backs down from challenges. You're somebody who's very strong. Not only that, you're extremely intelligent and very, very creative. We saw that here as well with the Empress. Now, they could see you as a mother or someone very nurturing and compassionate. Um, the Empress is, you know, the queen of queens, the embodiment of fertility, creation, growth, new beginnings, abundance. 
So this person feels like there's nothing, they think of you as some, there's nothing that you can't do. You know, you set your mind to something and you will see it through. That you're very intelligent, you know, that your, your conversation's never boring. That you're very sophisticated, okay, when we see a queen of swords. So they like, they like how strong you are. Your strength, your creativity, your perseverance, that you know your worth. Okay, now, difficult question. Again, take what resonates. We're going to ask what they may dislike about you. If there's anything at all that they may dislike about you or the connection. Um, for some of you, it could be that you're married or that your family is an issue. Okay. Um, if I didn't say signs here, we had Aries strongly here. Um, Gemini Libra Aquarius, Taurus Libra. I mean, it could be any sign, but that's very prominent. Um, what they don't like is they feel that somehow they cannot get to you. There's always something that's blocking your connection. That it could be a marriage or that is family. That is always kind of in the way. It's always creating an issue. That they have to kind of watch you from a distance. That they cannot be with you. That there are potentially people who would disapprove or they feel that maybe people see them as unworthy of you. It doesn't mean that that's true, but that's how they may perceive it or fear you know, so what they don't like is they feel that they don't, they've done enough for you or that people would also believe that. Um, like I said, it doesn't mean that you think it's true or that, they, or that you know, it even is, but they, they think that family is an issue. Again, I did get something about like a, a either like a father figure or a, a brother, someone very protective or maybe even an ex, someone that they feel somehow a threat. Okay, so what do they really feel about you? What do they really feel about pile number one? Okay, so nine of pentacles, the world, the knight of pentacles. You know, you want to know, do they, are, do they have feelings for you? As romantic feelings? Yes, I mean, they feel... Again, I get something about this person. It's like, I feel like I have to earn you or I have to, not that you know what I mean, but like I have to des be deserving of you. I have to work harder to be the kind of man, the kind of woman that I, they feel that you deserve. Because it's like they're trying to like get to your level, you know, that you're somebody who's so like sophisticated and intelligent and, you know, driven and successful. And they want to also bring that to the table. Um, they feel... Like, you're the one, you know, like, see, the world, it's like your completion, you're everything they've been searching for. They feel, you know, at home with you, but at the same time, it's like, you're, it's like, somehow they feel that you're that person who's actually, like, making them be the best version of themselves, or, like, you were brought into their life to kind of show them their true potential. Like, they always knew it was there, but they had to work to, you know, unleash it or to tap into it. Um, so they feel... Yeah, I mean, it's very warm. This is very, like, serious. They feel that you're somebody they want to be lo with long-term. But what do they want? I'll tell me more about what they want. Tell me more about what they want. We have judgment, the fool, and the tower. Well, Aries, Scorpio energy here. They want to take a leap of faith. It can be unexpected. It's like... This is like a, a call or like a message of some sort, something that comes out of nowhere. Somehow music could be important for some of you. You know, they want to declare something to you. They want to announce something to you. You know, we have like the speakers here. The fool is like taking a risk and this is unexpected. Taking a leap of faith with you. It's unexpected, but they want to do this. That's what they want. They want to work together. They want to build something. Three of Pentacles under the deck. So, again, this is very positive. Um... Let's see what messages this person may have for you. What messages does this person want to pass to you? Okay. Okay. So they are saying the thought of truly losing you terrifies me. I've been hiding things from you. I'm afraid of how intense my desire is for you. So, yeah, this person, this is this is in, this is definitely very 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 intense. A lot of physical passion and desire here, 
but there are things that they haven't told you. They may fear that maybe if you knew about their family, their lifestyle, their background, their finances, their true education, they may not have, they may have said they finished college but never went into detail about it, that kind of thing. Um, they may have dropped out, you know, I, I feel like there's, they feel that they are undeserving in some way. Um, that's what I feel like they've been hiding from you. But this is about taking a leap of faith and that's what they want to do. So that's what I have for you, pile number one. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe. We're going to go ahead and move into pile number two. Welcome, pile number two. If you chose the um, Tourmalated Quartz Tower, then this is your reading. Okay. So let's start this off. Let's find out how does this person see this connection. Like when they think about you, what do they think about the situation? How do they view it? What needs to be known, seen, and understood for pal number two, please. Okay. How do they see your connection? What do they think? Okay. Well, it seems like there's some kind of renewal here. It's like they've had, they, they see this as like they're ha they have an opportunity here to try this again, to kind of have a, a, a blank slate or a clean start, fresh start kind of thing, blank canvas. Um, and they're tr they don't want to mess this up. They feel kind of excited but nervous, it seems, because they want to be prepared. They don't want to say something stupid. Um, and I know you're shaking your head. What do you mean? Like, I, I feel like this person is has a really hard time like they or they think that they have a hard time say, saying um the right thing but i think you kind of think, think the opposite it's kind of like i immediately get somebody who how do i want to how do i want to express this like i get someone who's like i'm not romantic but at times this person is like the most romantic person you've ever met in your life you get what i'm trying to say like, they're like i'm not good at that kind of thing but they are yeah, that's what i kind of get and I, when they see the situation, it's like they have this, they don't want to mess it up. They feel that they have this chance here and they're looking for information. You know, how do I, how do I make the most of this? And, you know, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? How do we, you know, move forward and grow together? You know, there, there is passion here. There is emotion involved. It feels like they're excited, but nervous. And I think that they want to figure out, you know, how to move forward, but they don't want to rush it either. They're nervous. So, I mean, positive, but let's see more about it. So what do they think about you? What do they think about you as a person? What do they think about you? What are their thoughts about you? When they think about you, what is it that they think about? Ooh, good. Okay. Okay, they're not being completely honest with you. Is that, okay, that's part of this, why they're so nervous. Um, now, you could be dealing with a Capricorn or a water sign with Sagittarius here, Aries. Um, I feel like this, first of all, this person, they may struggle with some form of addiction. And it's like that has been an, an issue in the past. That's why they're kind of nervous, scared. Now, when I say addiction, no, that does not mean that all of them struggle with substance abuse. Some of them, it could be drinking, it could be gambling, it could be, you know, um, certain types of material that they, you could find on the internet you know what I mean uh, it, it can be it can be a lot of things um, being a workaholic or you know there's a lot of things that it could be video games even it's like this person has obsessive thoughts this person has trauma this person they can't stop thinking about you and the, it's like their their thoughts are consumed with you we see the devil the eight of swords it's constant. This person also may not have been completely honest in the past, and it like haunts them to this day. Like even if you have this this fresh start, this blank canvas to start over and to try again and to try to heal, your person could even be trying to go through some form of recovery. Um, and it's like they still feel this guilt. So when they think about you, it's like yes, I can see a future with you, Four of Wands, Eleven, Eleven, you know. But I also feel that I may not be deserving of it because there are certain things that this person you know, maybe hid in the past or wasn't honest about before, even if you have this chance to kind of clear the air and talk about it, they're scared of messing it up. Okay, so what do they, let's ask some, some more questions. I want to ask, first of all, what do they like about you? You as a person, what things do they like about you? What things do they like about you? Okay, that card's like, we're coming. Um, Honestly, 
I'm going to be honest here. Like I said, I think this is somebody who struggles with addiction. And that when I say addiction, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're drinking or you know using drugs. Uh, it, it could be a lot of things. But I think that you've always kind of stood by them. Like, even when you gave them space, they knew they could always rely on you. Because, I mean, here she's walking away and they're kind of crying. Look at all the cups there. And then we have the next, you know, the, 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 it's nighttime. Then again in the morning, here you are, you know. You know, let me offer you what I can, you know. And it's like you never left Pisces energy. It's like you were always there. You never gave up on them, even when you had to give them space or there was difficulties between you. You were always there. For some of you, it also could be some type of grief that this person's been dealing with, depression, or even a, a loss of someone close to them. And no matter what it was, they could always, always, always depend on you. No matter if they were broke, if they were in a really dark place in their life, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't leave them hanging. You were there. You were trying to be supportive. You were trying to be encouraging. Look at here. Look at how that four of cups under the deck. You see how, you know, he's kind of in this place of sadness and she comes to offer him a cup to comfort him. It, you know, I mean, it's like, that's who they saw you as, you know, you were that person that at the end of the day, even if, you know, you guys, you know, had falling out or disagreements or whatever, no matter what was going on, if they pushed you away, they knew that they could always count on you. So, I mean, you were not going anywhere. No matter how stuck they felt, you know, you were always supportive. You were always encouraging. They could feel your love and that you genuinely cared. All right, so let's ask what they dislike about you. And again, take what resonates, leave what does not. This could be about what they dislike about you or about the situation. So let's see, what do they, if, if anything, what do they dislike? Well, okay, so I think that this person, and I wouldn't say this is even a bad thing. I think this person dislikes that they have feelings for you because it means that they have to be emotional and open and vulnerable with someone when that's not what they were seeking out or looking for, in all honesty. Um, it's like they found friendship in you, you know, it's like they, you know, even when they want to push you away, they know they can't <laughs> because like, you know, even if, you know, you honor their need for space, they can always rely on you. Again, it's like you motivate them, try to prepare them, try to push them forward. Cancer energy here. What they dislike, it's like when they didn't want to hear a motivational speech, there you were with one. <laughs> that's what I feel like. And that's not even necessarily a bad thing. But it's like when they were in a dark place. Have you ever been in a, a place in your life, some of you, I'm sure you can relate, where you've been so depressed, you're like, I don't want a pep talk. I just want to wallow in my, my pity, okay? And you've got that one person who's like, you can do it. Get up. Let's do it. You're just like, go away. Let me just lay here. Come on. Let me just, let me just sulk in my <laughs> sadness. That's kind of what I get. It's like you're always so persistent. You were always so affectionate. You were always so supportive. You were always so encouraging, even when they weren't looking for that, you know, and that's probably the main thing they actually needed, you know, and they don't, I don't think it's a hate that this person has, but it, you know, it feels like it could be frustrating at times. It's like you, you were always there. They could always rely on you, even when they didn't feel they deserved it because they were not always giving completely to the connection with you. They, you know, they fell in love with you, your kind heart, your generosity. All right. So what do they really feel? about you what do they really feel what's what's really in their heart what do they really feel here um i feel that this person feels weighted down because i think that i honestly like i said i don't do mental health readings or health readings I think that this person has really struggled with some form of addiction or loss or pain, just a lot of things in their life um, that they've been kind of going through and struggling with, and it's like they feel overwhelmed by it. They feel like they want to work on things with you, but it's also ha really hard for them to really open up about what they feel. I think they may even have have used certain things in the past to like mask their feelings. I mean, we definitely see that there's love here. And a lot of great, the gratefulness, you know, t towards you and like how you've been there for them and been supportive. But I do feel like this person, like I say, they try really hard to emotionally detach. I think they're terrified of losing you at this point. What is it that they actually want? You know, when I see King of Swords, King of Swords is not somebody who doesn't feel, but it's someone who does suppress their emotions. You know, air signs always get that bad rep for being unemotional or detached. But I think this person just really guarded. What do they want? 
well, they want to be with you. Uh, they, they, it's a star, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Uh, this person wants to be with you. They, um, you want, they want things to be fair and balanced. Um, looking through glass. Some of you could have met this person online or could be at a distance from them. I don't know why I'm getting also somebody, maybe talk to someone in prison or someone overseas for some of you or just looking at your photos. But, you know, they want to be with you. They want to be successful. They want you to see them confident. They want they want to be, do right by you, okay? Uh, because the I mean, they're in love with you. The lovers here. They feel a strong connection, a physical connection as well. But they want you to like, they want to show off and show you how successful they've been. They want to you know get through whatever this is they've been struggling with. They want to do right by you. What messages do they have for you? What messages does this person have? Okay. Yeah. So here we have, I've been searching for you online. If I can get that to focus in, we will at some point today we go. Yeah. And we do see that here with this card. And then we have, I want to wrap my arms around you and make you feel safe. And I feel protective of you. So that's what I have for you, pile number two. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and move into pile number three. Hello there, pile number three. If you chose the Tiger's Eye Tower, then this is your reading. I'm going to go ahead and put that back here. Let's get started for pile number three. What needs to be known, seen, and understood? What messages, guidance, and clarity needs to come through for pile number three, please? Let us start this off with how your person sees the connection. Like, what are they, what are they, what's in their mind? What do they think about? How do they view this situation with you? What do they feel like is happening here? Okay, well, I mean, they can't, no matter how far I try to run, you reel me back in, I cannot, every, I feel you everywhere I go, no matter who I, who, what I'm doing, who I'm with, where I'm at, it's like, I feel you, that's how they think about, they view the situa situation, the sun, the wheel of fortune, the eight of swords, they cannot stop thinking about you, you are always on their mind, every minute of every day, they feel that you are destined to be together, and the sun is the happiest card in the deck. So you genuinely make this person really happy. This person thinks that the stars have aligned to bring the two of you together for a higher reason, a purpose, that you may be meant to be together, potentially. What thoughts, what do they think about when they think about you? Like when they think about you as a person, what are their thoughts about you? What do they think about when it comes to you? Virgo energy here, Aries energy here. Okay, they cannot get away with anything when it comes to you. Um, you are somebody who picks apart and analyzes every single detail. It's interesting because I have like this mix of like somebody who's very much, you know, organized and a planner, but also likes to kind of have that balance of being spontaneous sometimes. You're exciting. They may see you as very artistic. Um, I feel like they see you as somebody, they think of you as somebody who, you know, is intellectual and likes to learn and absorb information. Um, but, you know, they also may could see you spiritually as like a reader or, you know, a psychic or, you know, you have uh, these abilities. Um, but again, I feel like when it comes to this, it's like, it doesn't matter, you know, what's going on. You will always analyze everything. You will always overthink it. You're in your head reflecting on the past. They feel like, you know, you, yes, there can be fun there, but they think of you as somebody that reflects a lot, that you analyze a lot, that you question things a lot. It's like they can't get away with shit. If they're trying to throw you a surprise party, you're the person who's like, wait a minute. What do you mean when you said, like, you're, <laughs> like, they can't get, they cannot have, they, you know, you, you just see it too clear. You're too logical. You're too analytical. Not that that's always bad. I mean, I'm a Virgo, so I, I mean, I think that's a blessing really, but... <laughs> Uh, let's see. You're smart. You're fun. You're smart. You have history together. Okay. What do they like about you? What things do they like about you as a person? What do they like about you? Okay. 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 So it's, like I said, I, I think there, there, I mean, there are some positives to, you know, kind of overthinking. 
you know, because it means you pay attention to the little things. It means you pay attention to the details closely and that, you know, um, you know, they can rely on you. It's like you, you, you see, you see things, things that, things that most people seem to miss, you know, it's like you see those things and, um, you're overthinking. Sometimes it allows you to see things clearly, you know, you gain a, a better perspective on things because you analyze it so much, you know, you question things, you're curious. They say you may overthink a little bit, but I think that they, you know, ultimately feel like you are somebody who presents yourself very confidently, that you're very ambitious and driven, motivated, you know, definitely could be earth energy. Have a little bit of water, a little bit of air, but, um, let's see. Leo, Aries, Virgo, it could be, I mean, it could be any sign, but the, the Nine of Pentacles, you know, is somebody who's independent and confident and successful and beautiful and ambitious and driven and motivated and confident. So, I mean, they think, they, they think that you're somebody, they like that, you know, that you're, I don't know why I'm getting like jack of all trades. Like you're good at everything that you do, whatever you set your mind to, like you want to learn how to cook you, you, and you succeed, you know, uh, you want to learn how to draw, you do it, you, you keep practicing, you get it, you know what I mean? You want to make music. It's like everything you do, this person just thinks that you're somebody, they, they like that. It's like you can always surprise, you know, surprise a lot of people, but to them, it's like they see it as like you just have these natural gifts. You, you're good at many things. Um, so they feel like whatever you, whatever you touch, you know, turns to gold kind of thing. All right. Hard question here and probably my least favorite question to ever get, but you know, it is one of the more popular ones people ask me, what do they dis dislike about you? If anything, I mean, this could be about you, could be about your situation. What do they dislike about you? If anything, what do they dislike? Oh, and there it is. <laughs> okay. So they, okay. Again, take no offense. We're going to be really honest here. Um, just as much as that overthinking can be a gift, it can also be a challenge. Um, they think that you question everything. Okay, that's what they see. It's like they can't get shit past you. It's like if they say they got off at 630 and they didn't pull in their driveway till, you know, 641. And you're like, wait a minute, I have, I have, I have driven from your work to, to your house before and it took me four and a half minutes. So when you said you were there and it took you 11 minutes, you know, down to the dot, hmm, you know what I mean? I, that's what, that, that's the thing for this person. And it doesn't make you right, them wrong. It, it, no, no, we're not going to pick sides. Just their energy, what they perceive. Okay. Um, what they just, they feel like you study everything to death as much as they can see it as a, a gift even, like say, and what they like about you you know, what they think about you, it can also, it can be hard because again, you're an overthinker. You, you study everything to death, you pick it apart, you know, and you, it concerns you and they feel like sometimes your head can make you emotional. Your overthinking can make you emotional and that it's hard for you to kind of get past that. But ultimately, I mean, I think that they do, you know, see something here with you, but I think that this person it stresses them out because they don't mind to reassure you, but I think that they also want some type of trust. Or they want you to have the confidence that other people see in you. Again, not that it's, you know, take it how it resonates. All right. What do they feel about you? What are their true feelings for you? Okay. What the? <laughs> didn't, 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 didn't number one. Okay, listen. Pal number one, I am pretty sure they had these exact three cards in a different order, but I think they had these exact cards, I think, or close to it. I can't remember. Um, Justice under the deck. So this is all major arcana. Let me just say, that's all major arcana. We have Scorpio, Libra, Capricorn. Um, they feel this intense, overwhelming desire. Um... I mean, is there emotional feelings? We have all this major arcana. I'd say yes, but I, 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 ooh, look at this. Look at the, look at the star. What the, what the world's happening here? Okay, so I, I think that this person, they, no matter what they do, they cannot get away from you. <laughs> and I don't feel like, I feel like they just can't get you out of their head. No matter what they're doing, it's like you have this, I mean, they kind of tell themselves that you put like a spell on me. Like, because I'm so into, I've never been this in, into anybody before. It's so intense and unexpected, this crazy powerful obsessive desire this intensity these feelings it's it's, it's a lot um they feel like 
jealous and possessive and just, I mean, like, they're burning with, like, lust. Um, that's what they feel. It's like, I mean, yes, I do feel that there's emotion and energy involved as well, like feelings. But I, I think with this, it's like it's very lusty. It's like they'd never been this attracted to anybody before. Okay, woo. Um, what do they want with you, though? What do they want with you? They want it all. They want it all. Temperance again. Look at all this. Sag, Cancer. This is somebody who wants you. They want to move forward with you. They want to be with you. They want to get married. I mean, this is somebody who definitely does not want under any... No matter how... It's it's like their passion burns so hot for you, it drives them crazy. It's like you, this is one of those situations where it's like, have you ever seen The Notebook? You know, Ali and Noah, they couldn't stand each other half the time, but they loved her so passionately. Anger and passion stem from the same place. Like, the, it's like you get under this on this person's nerves, but at the same time, they love you so much. That's kind of what I get. Like, this, you drive each other crazy, absolutely crazy. But at the same time, it's like they couldn't imagine their life with anybody else. So what do they want to tell you? What messages do they have for you? So they're saying, I feel alone in a crowded room. Doesn't matter who's around them, they don't feel like they can be themselves or, you know, that anyone else understands them. It's just the two of you. It's the only time they feel, you know, at home. I wasn't brave enough to reveal my feelings to you. And I keep beginning to write to you, but deleting it before I hit send. So this person definitely wants to open up about their feelings and their desires with you. Um, they definitely want to open up about that, but like they're having a hard time expressing their feelings. But, I mean, you're the one for them. That's what they think. You're the one. So, that's what I have for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. As always, I wish you strength, and I wish you many blessings. Bye-bye.